You see this? Just about every day you hear how they're finding new things in space, and all oh, this and that, and all kinds of things. Well, with this Webb Space Telescope and Hubble and all of these things, they're finding elemental building blocks in the depths and the darkness of space. Well, let's talk about the depths and the darkness of space. Space is saturated with particles. There is no empty space. This is the Hubble, uh, this Webb telescope with its powerful infrared detection capabilities. Listen, is able to see through dense, dense dust with more clarity and detail than any telescope that has come before. That's because space is filled with this dense dust. That's because infrared wavelengths of light don't scatter off dust particles the way shorter wavelengths do, which means this James Webb Space Telescope can effectively see through all this dust better than optical instruments like Hubble. How could they possibly think they can see I mean, how can they possibly think that space is a vacuum? They know it's not. They've known this for many years. This is Fermilab, quantum foam. This is back from 2013, Don Lincoln. Empty space isn't empty. It's filled with particles in space. They know this. And they have fields around them. They're subatomic particles. They're everywhere in space. They know this, but they keep touting out this, oh, space is a vacuum, vacuum. Not at all. Which means that the most dense regions in space will slow the light more than the open -er areas. But empty space is not empty anywhere. Nothing is empty in space. Saturated with particles. Okay. If you have not heard of the redshift, what it means is light spins at a certain speed. That's what's called the frequency, how many spins it does, let's say, in a minute. Now, the redshift means that it might be spinning a hundred spins here. And as it goes further and further and further through you know, particles and something that obstructs it, it shifts to the red and the frequency becomes longer. So, to visualize this, this is when the light's coming in from its source. And why is it going? Because all the th stuff in front of it is keeping it sort of, it's slowing down. Just that's the nature of of resistance because this is a particle and I've shown this very very clearly now if light slows down as it pushes against other particles in this case it happened to be glass but if it's gases or anything they slow down and I can prove this as well there's no question about this everybody knows this and in water it slows down to a certain speed and it's fully understood that resistance to light causes it to shift to the red. Now, that's why they say outer space, in a vacuum, light just keeps going forever the same speed. That's how they determine where the galaxies are and where all these light sources are coming from. They see a light source out here and it shift. It was out there coming from them and it's shifted down here red. They say, ooh, that must be six million years away or whatever it is, light years. Now, they're not taking into account any obstructions in space, dust, particles, light, because light is particles as well. All of those things push and shove. And that they're really holding on tight to this belief that Hubble is able to measure these distances. It's just not. They're finally starting to question it. This just came out a couple of days ago. Space, vacuum friction, cosmological Hubble redshift. And they're saying, well, what about this, this stuff in space? And he says, it leads to the predicament of vacuum friction. Quantum vacuum can act as a manner reminiscent of a viscous fluid, similar to, to watery stuff. Coming through it, you have to come through it and plow through it.
And I can show light plowing through gases, which is nothing more than the things that are in space. Very, very similar. Okay, this is a vacuum friction cosmological Hubble redshift, and this is just a few days ago, for February 18th, 2023. Now, they're talking about, indeed, his lecture, by, he started his lecture by speaking of the profound analog between materials and vacuum. Now they get down to what is the, the predicament is the vacuum friction. So if light is coming through a vacuum, there's nothing to slow it down. I agree. It might just keep going the same speed. There's nothing to slow it down. Well, but if there's all kinds of particles and dust, that's a different story. And there is. Now, so they lead to this friction issue. And it says, they all agree, the physicists, it says it's quite reasonable to assume that by gradually slowing down the speed of light, the vacuum friction causes the cosmological Hubble redshift in a non-expanding universe. Absolutely. It's slowing down as it comes to us, and the wavelength is getting longer and longer. So it's not just it's going away, pulling the wavelength with it. It's just getting slower as it comes to us. Exact same situation. And that caused, they had to bring in the Big Bang and all this stuff to make that work. No. Nobody knows whether we're expanding or not, but no matter where you look, light is slowing down. It's redshifting, so that would mean we are the center of the universe, if this was correct, the redshift. Because no matter where you look, it's slowing down, obviously, because it's coming down, it's slowing down as it comes to us. And I'll show you why it slows down. This is from our light experiments. Light has to push through all those other particles. In the case of space, they're light particles, they're dust, they're all the things that are in space. Now, this shows the whole, whoops, well, that's pretty good. These are the light particles. These are particles of light. These are photons. And we accelerated them here at the Venturi and actually split the black away from the white, which is the muon and the electron neutrinos. We separated them into sterile muons and electron showers. And then they came back together over here. Some would call that fission and fusion. Splitting and coming back together, that's what the definition is. These are the particles of light, which are the smart smallest, literally, particles that exist. They're elementary particles, and that's what Fermilab agrees with. They see the same particles, but they see them in a big pile of debris. We see them actually attached to each other and manifesting themselves. Green, red, blue, all the same particle. So, light has to push through everything in front of it. That's what it causes it to slow down. That's what the redshift is. So all of this nonsense about Hubble and so forth, they're a big waste of money. They're nice pictures, but nothing to say how big the universe is or where this galaxy is versus this one. We could be looking through heavy clouds here, and which would really slow that light down, and here are no clouds, and light just keeps coming. So who knows where we are? <laughs> We're lost in space. All right, see this here? They know everything's wrong. Listen to what they have to say. They, they're looking way out, and they're finding all of these gigantic galaxies that, sh that they should not exist this far away and be this big. So here's what he's saying. Half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. It, 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 and they know these things, but now they're going to say, oh, well, maybe it, we're inside of some form of a rubber balloon. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable the type of things that they come up with to justify these just obvious things. Light is slowing down. That's all. That's why they're seeing these big galaxies way out there, because it, light from them is just slowing down. Light from everything is just slowing down. They can be right on our doorstep. They can be a bazillion miles away. It depends what's in between us. Is it slowing down more here or slowing down more there? Not that hard to understand. 